Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an infinite sum. Uh, of course, this sum needs to converge in order for us to be able to evaluate it and find the finite answer. That's the case. So I'm going to give you that r is between 0 and 1. It doesn't have to be. It could also be between negative 1 and 1, but we need some type of condition. I just wanted to choose a positive r to keep things positive. So we have this sum, and we're going to take advantage of a known geometric sum which is 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed, so on and so forth. Hopefully you are familiar with what this is. If r is between negative 1 and 1, obviously r should be different from 1. And, oh, did I say 1? Okay, r is between negative 1 and 1, uh, but they're not included. Uh, our sum is going to converge. And this is the, the famous infinite geometric sum, and this can be written as 1 over 1 minus r if r satisfies those properties. Okay, so how can I get the expression that I want from an expression like this? For example, one of the techniques that we used earlier was differentiating, right? If you differentiate this, take the derivative, you're going to get 1 plus 2r plus 3r squared dot dot dot. But that's not good because we kind of need division. We, we're dividing by 2 by 3 by 4. Here it's multiplication. So I have to do the opposite. So I need numbers at the bottom. What is the opposite? Integration, exactly. So let's go ahead and integrate. All right, that's what we're gonna do. Integrate the following expression. Now, what happens if you integrate it? So here's what we're gonna get. One plus r plus r squared plus r cubed, dot, 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 dr. And that is gonna equal, since it's equal to one over one minus r, we're just gonna integrate both sides with respect to r. Great. So we have an infinite sum, but don't worry, because there's a pattern, so we can just integrate it following the pattern. Uh, if you integrate 1, you're going to get r. If you integrate r, you're going to get r squared over 2. r squared is going to give you r cubed over 3, r to the 4th over 4, so on and so on. You get the idea. r to the n divided by n. Basic uh, power rule, right? And of course, that's going to go on forever. On the right-hand side, we have the ln function. If you have 1 over r, that will be ln r. If you have 1 over negative r, that's going to be... Uh, negative ln negative r, but we have 1 minus r. And notice that r is less than 1, so 1 minus r is positive. I don't need the absolute value. To keep a long story short, the integral of the right-hand side is going to be negative ln 1 minus r. But we have a constant that we have to use, right? Plus c. If you don't put that constant, you know what happens on the test, right? And you're like, what? We have a constant? What are we going to do? Okay, don't worry. It's not quite what I need, like if you look at the left-hand side, but I'm pretty close. How? I can take out an r, right? Because r is a common factor, and so we can pull the r out, and inside we're going to get 1 plus r over 2 plus r squared over 3 plus r cubed over 4 plus dot dot dot, and guess what? That's our original expression. Awesome. That's great. So then we are just going to do what? Okay, I want the stuff inside the parentheses. So can I just get rid of the r? Well, you can divide both sides by r. Let's do it. If you do, of course, r does not equal 0, right? Well, it's not, I think. Okay. Yep, it's not equal to 0. So now um, this is going to go on. And I, can I switch to c and the ln because it just bugs me. I, I want to start with a positive term. c minus ln 1 minus r. Remember, we didn't need the absolute value divided by r. Okay. This looks good. Maybe not good. Here's the million dollar question. Can I find c? And the answer is sure. But how do you find it? That is the question, right? Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the limit of both sides. Limit as, and this is going to be interesting, so we're going to include a little calculus in here. Limit as our approach is 0 of the left-hand side. This, you know, these are all good sums and continuous and all that stuff, whatever. Okay, anyway, so we're going to take limit on both sides and see what happens. Something interesting is going to happen. Something very interesting. Well, the left-hand side is not that interesting because... If everything um, approaches 0, everything that includes r, that's going to be 0, and we're going to have a 1. So uh, that's not very interesting. But look at the right-hand side. As, this, as r approaches 0, this is going to approach 0. So if the top approaches a number, you have the situation like number divided by 0, which is kind of like approaching infinity. It could be a positive infinity, negative infinity. So that's not good. I need a finite answer. So what's that supposed to mean? It means... If the bottom approaches 0, the top also has to approach 0. 
Make sense? So we're going to have the zero over zero situation. L'Hopital's rule, whatever, in the term form, whatever you want to call that. But here's what we need. Since limit as r approaches zero of r is zero, we must have limit as r approaches zero of c minus ln one minus r to approach zero. But how is that possible? If r approaches zero, this is going to approach zero, this is going to approach ln one, which is zero, and this is going to approach c. So I want c to be zero, in other words. Yay, I got rid of c. Isn't that awesome? So now our sum is going to turn into the following. 1 plus r over 2 plus r squared over 3 plus r cubed over 4. Since r uh, c is equal to zero, this sum is just going to equal c minus ln 1 minus r over r. But c is zero, so I'm just going to, well, why did I write c? I don't even know. We can just write this as negative ln 1 minus r over r. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.